Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. I am Joe Finley, aka Miss Cast Joe, and today we're going to talk about the new Road Connect software, uh, which pairs with the Rode NT USB Mini, and we're going to compare that to the Elgato Wave and the Wave software. Uh, we're going to look at this from a streamer's and a podcaster's point of view and try and figure out who this stuff works the best for. Let's have a look. So looking at the Rode Connect, you can see the setup here. Um, it can hook up to four microphones. Now the big problem with this software right off the bat, it only works with the Rode NT USB Mini. It doesn't even work with another Rode microphone, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, you would think that you'd be able to use any microphone, but would maybe require one USB Mini or at least Rode microphone uh, to get the thing working. The Wave does this, which we'll look at in a minute. You can't run the software without having the Wave plugged in. But then after that, you can add other USB microphones, and it doesn't make sense to me that you can't do this. I think that's something Rode needs to look at in the future. This would be like making the Rodecaster Pro only work if the pod mic was the mic that was plugged in. Okay, so... Here's where you would set up your microphones. I don't actually have this microphone right now, but we'll go through and you can plug them in each of the areas. Uh, the one thing I like that Rode did here, uh, very similar to what they did with uh, the Rodecaster, is that you can color code all your microphones. When you've got a lot of microphones floating around, it becomes a little bit of a problem. Uh, Rode created a color coding system uh, that originally was with the mics and cables for... Uh, your roadcaster, but now they're doing that with the NT USB Mini as well. They can color code the microphones, the cables, and right here on the screen. Uh, another thing you can do so you have two virtual or two different uh, audio things that you can add. So you can add a system audio and you can add a virtual audio. Uh, this virtual audio is a virtual device uh, that you can route any audio into, uh, which is good. Uh, we'll compare that to the right wave in a moment. And now I'm all done. So the setup's here. So all your microphones and all that would be here. It's a really nice, simple setup, which is good uh, for the beginner podcaster, especially uh, even the beginner streamer, if you don't want to get too uh, fancy about it. But you can see here, if I bring up my app volume and device preferences. I can just, uh, the same as I can do with the Wavelink, which we'll get into in a minute, I can route any sources into both the system and the virtual output, like so. So I've got some Spotify playing out of my virtual output right now. I've got my Google Chrome playing out of my system output right now. Just an old episode of the podcast for you. Um, so very easy to configure and one really nice thing for the podcaster you can record just hit record and it starts going uh cool little thing too uh this is basically the exact same functionality as the roadcaster uh, as you're going you can create little flags to find things later on uh, when you go through the file in the system and then you can stop when we're done here and if you click down here then you can see your recordings. So here's the very first recording, and then it's here for playback. So I can click play, I can go, and I can even search through my flags, and you can find them like so. So when you say something important or something that you want to maybe go back to another time, it's a really nice, easy way to find it. Uh, I really love this uh, for your, again, just run-of-the-mill, early-going podcaster. I would definitely recommend this over uh, the Roadcaster Pro at the beginning, only because it's a very big investment and you have to really know that this is what you want to do before you spend that much money. I mean, you're already spending money on the Rode NT uh, USB minis. You don't want to spend Rodecaster money plus getting XLR marks plus getting that, unless you have a lot of that stuff already or if you just like toys. That's why I got mine. Uh, but this is definitely a good jumping off point with the price point of the NT USB minis. Uh, you get two of those, and if it's just a two person podcast, of course, and you're basically ready to rock with just these two things. Going back, you do see you do have some control, obviously, about just the gain of the inputs, and you could, of course, mute any individual input. Uh, and then if you click up here, you'll see 
some more some input levels things like that uh the mics have more controls over those you can see that uh in roads promotional videos and things like that uh that's just selling stuff this is just me looking at stuff uh but you know very very simple controls nothing too complicated now we bring up the wavelength and we see something totally different here i have a fairly large setup with my wavelength already uh but you can see just how much uh you can do as far as inputs and outputs like i can fill each one of these with a different thing and i can route a, an individual source to each one of these then not only control how much is coming in my or going to my stream or whatever output I'm using. Also, how much is going to my headphones? So when I've got those on, I can mix it just the way I want. If I'm doing something where I have some music in the background, but I need to hear my chat better, uh, especially in a podcast scenario or something like that, that is very important. So you can control that any which way you please. You might want to get rid of the music altogether in your headphones so you don't get distracted. Uh, same as when you're streaming. You might want your audience to hear some music and you might not want to hear music so much because you're listening for footsteps or you just like the music that's in the game, what have you. You also have a lot of control as far as locking the two things. So if you scroll down here, I've got it lower in my headphones that I have going to my stream that I lock here. Everything's good. And there's a lot more control as far as how you hear things as you adjust them. So if I, say, turn my headphones down here, and then I turn on this little lock as I turn these up and down, the ratio stays locked. And very much the same as uh, we can route anything into each individual source. They make it a little bit easier, because if you just click here, it brings up that app right away. So now I can take what I want. I had this go into the road. Now I can just go and find my Wavelength music I'm going to be looking for. I have a lot of sources. So Wavelength music. Boom. And it instantly showed up there, you see? And I've got them really low in both right now, so I can turn them up any which way I choose. See? Now very easily I have some nice beats going on underneath. And I can get rid of them. All that control. I can have my game going in here. I, I I don't really use the system a lot. I have a few little notification things that I like to have ready. Uh, browser's good if you're watching some videos or something like that. Your voice chat through your Discord or Zoom for pro, uh, podcasting, anything like that. All wonderful stuff. Your auxiliaries. I, again, it's it feels limitless. Obviously, the limit is nine, but it feels limitless. I don't know anybody who uses all of these do you if you do leave me a comment below i'd be very curious to see who has such an elaborate setup that they need all of that and you will have my respect forever madam or sir now let's have a look at this with audacity for a second again if you're going to use this kind of thing for a podcast so all you have to do is find your source again i have so many sources but you should just be able to find your wavelength stream right here it's in stereo and we've got it and now all i'm going to do is hit record and we're recording let's see this better bam there's a lot of noise right now just because i have this wide open but oh and there's music but you can see this is a very small step that you'd have to do to turn the wavelength into everything that the road can do, plus the ability to use more than just the Elgato Wave in the software. Now again, like I said, you have to have at least the one plugged in. But then after that, you can use pretty much anything. In fact, let's have a look and see if we can use anything, anything. I'm going to try and find, I'm going to just use for my auxiliary here. So here's some other just inputs right off the bat. I actually have the microphone from my webcam that I'm currently not using, but I click on it and it is alive. It's right here. Hello? Hello? No problem. So I got to consider a couple of different factors if I'm going to pick between these two different pieces of software. One, the microphone that I'm putting into it because you have to have the microphone to make the thing work. So 
if I want a system with a Elgato Wave, I can get a USB mic, any other USB mic, and also add those to the mix for multiple guests and all that. The NT-USB Mini, the only thing you can use for the Rode Connect, but then it's the uniformity as well of doing that. No, I'm not saying you can't get a bunch of Elgato Waves for a multi-host setup, but that's when the price comes in, because if we're looking at cash, uh, you know, the Elgato Wave is over $200, whereas the NT USB Mini is sitting at about $129. So for almost the same price, just a little bit more, you could get two NT USB Minis. Now, just from a software standpoint, I just don't think that there's any competition here between the two, especially if you're going to be somebody who does a lot of different types of content creation. If you're going to stream, if you're going to podcast, do all that. I do all of these things. That's why I use this. By the way, you can check out my streams both on this page, uh, the Miscast Joe page, and on our podcast page for Miscast Commentary, where we do our record sessions live. So make sure you go and check those out. Uh, and then... Go check out the podcast just anywhere you listen to podcasts. You can do that. All the links are down below. You'll love it. But as somebody who creates a lot of different types of content, I've got to go with the Elgato Wave and the Wavelink software. Uh, just so many options, so much uh, customizability, uh, so many different ways to, again, mix to both my output, either being a stream or recording like we did on, the, uh, on Audacity, or any recording software for that matter. Uh, you can use... I even had it working on DaVinci Resolve recording through Fairlight. So lots of different options uh, to get this thing recorded. You don't need the functionality of Rhodes record button. Granted, it does have a few nice bells and whistles, the ability to flag and things like that. I've used Audacity for a very long time and the control that Wave and the Wavelink give me over what Rode can do for me in this particular scenario is just you know, it's no contest. Plus add on to that, the fact that I don't need only Elgato waves in a multi-host environment. I can use one wave. I could use a Rode NT-USB mini. I could use Razer. I could use, you know, some cheap knockoff. Anything goes. I suppose the only advantage of only being able to use the NT-USB mini for the Kinect is the uniformity if you're gonna do something uh, on video with your podcast or something like that. It's nice to have everybody kind of uh, looking the same and it's a prettier table that way for sure. Uh, but that's really it. The ability to use whatever you want just kind of goes out the window. So if you're not planning on going with the NT-USB mini, then there's no point whatsoever. But I guess if you weren't planning on going with the Rode NT-USB mini, you probably stopped this video very early. Are we all worried about how often I have to say NT-USB Mini? And are you worried about how many times I've edited out me saying it incorrectly? It's been a lot. So like I said, both mics are great, but I can't say enough good things about Elgato's Wavelink software uh, compared to the Kinect. So if that control and that software is the one thing that's going to tip the scales one way or the other, go get the Elgato. If you're concerned about price, just get the Wave 1. Uh, the Wave 3 has got a little bit more functionality. It's a little bit bigger, uh, but both mics sound great. So all you really have to worry about is just the slight price difference between the two. So that's everything for this video. Uh, if I missed anything or if there's anything else you want to know about either of these two uh, pieces of software, uh, just leave a comment down below. Uh, if you want to see me do more comparisons like this also leave a comment down below and if you enjoyed what you saw uh leave a little like you know smash that like button uh subscribe to the channel we're going to be doing a lot more uh equipment based things and talking a lot more about creating podcasts and uh streams and content in general so until next time get to work i can't wait to see what you guys do we're ready to do this guys I know yes, that most sir. of what just happened is technically my fault because I'm also the producer of, <laughs> of this thing. Blame YouTube. But it's fine. But I do blame YouTube because, like, honest to God, the two things... I'm not going to get into it. This is my own personal sesh. Uh, let's have a fun game. I'm going to keep it fair. Keep it simple. Keep it simple, stupid.